regret behind. How many ever had a regret in your life where you said something or you did something and you are so sorry you said it? Ever, anybody ever done that? Yeah. And how many know that it's kind of hard to let go of something that you said that you're not proud of? And how many know that it actually almost stops us living for a while? It actually comes to the point where we're so ashamed about ourselves. Regret. It doesn't have to be something said. Even our actions that we took or something that we did almost shuts our whole life down. And today is the time to leave your regret behind. Because that regret is stopping us from flowing in God's kingdom the way we need to do. And what we need to do. Amen? How many of you want to get ready? I'm just going to share you a story about Peter, of course. And uh, we're going to share it and we're going to relate it to, to this title. Now, this message, this passage can be used for all kinds of messages, but there's so much in it. But I'm going to relate to Peter and how he denied Jesus. Man, how, how many times don't we deny Jesus? Judas betrayed him. Judas had every opportunity to make that right with God. He had every opportunity. <laughs> there's there's this, this place where and the disciples, you know, they all said that there's no way we're ever going to despise you. There's no way we're ever going to do this to you. Peter says, there's, I, I would rather die with you before I deny you. How many of you know you've ever been in that place where that is such a regret what you've done with your call, your purpose in life, and the, thing, the very thing that makes you tick, and the very thing you said you'd never do, you did. And now you're trying to move past that point. And you're trying to move past the point saying, God, you know I didn't mean that. But at the same time, I did that. Now, we can relate. This might be a serious message. It might not be a serious message. But, you know, we have a couple fun messages in a row here. So if we have one serious one, we can handle it, right? We have to walk into this place. And I, I look at myself, and I remember circumstances when I was young. I can't remember anymore because they're healed, but God brought them back my memory just so I can use them as examples. But just circumstances where, I'm not going to share them, by the way, because they're way too much of a regret. But, <laughs> but the fact is they're, they're, they're terrible. They're those places where, where you're young and you did things and you said things and you say, oh boy, how do I get over this time in my life? And they, they follow you. Regrets follow you for years. They actually shut you right down in what Christ Jesus has for you. They shut you down. Pete was so regretted, and now I'm going ahead of myself. Maybe we'll read some scripture, maybe we won't, but it's relating to scripture here. But Pete, Pete went, was so, de so devastated that he went back fishing. How many of you know when we are regret, we just leave our call sometimes. We leave the very thing God has called us, and we just go back to what we know. <laughs> we forget to grow in Christ Jesus. We forget to move forward. And we just said, well, this is what I know. I'm going to go back to fishing. And even within the story, as you go, and Jesus still blesses him in the fishing. Either way, you know, Jesus is always there. And Jesus never, ever said that we're going to be perfect. And he never said those things won't happen to us. Matthew um, 26, 31 to 35, it talks about how Pete denied Jesus. And Jesus said to him, you know what? It's going to happen that you are going to deny me three times before the rooster crows. And he says, no, that won't happen because I love you, Jesus. And because I know who I am, I'm, I choose to die with you, Jesus. I choose to do everything with you. And maybe they will, but I won't do that. You can read that. I'm kind of paraphrasing that, but you can read that. He, he kind of goes out. You know, how many times don't we go that way and say, that is not going to happen to me. Uh, there's no way I'm going to fall into that trap. I'm going to walk it fully in Jesus Christ no matter what. And then the regret comes. Then when it comes, it plays, oh my goodness, then the power comes. Let's just read that in Matthew um, 26, 69 to 67. Now, now um, Peter sat in the palace, they were in the place where they took Jesus for a question, I believe. And the uh, dismal came into, the servant came into to him saying, you also were with Jesus of Galilee. And, but he denied. The word deny means I, he refused Jesus right there. He denied, he refused Jesus. Oh my, well, that hits my heart when I hear the word refuse Jesus. Pete refused Jesus Christ. Refused him, he denied him. That's a huge thing in the realm of the earth, the realm of us who we are, the realm of the human nature. That's a huge thing, denying. The very fact of truth, right? And then he goes and says, before them all. He denied before them all, saying, I know not 
what you say. Verse two, um, 71 says, And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said to him, to them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Now the second time came and Pete went into the porch. He was in the palace. Now he went outside and said, Oh boy, I can't take this. I don't want to. I believe in his heart already. He said, I don't want to deny Jesus one more time, but I can't admit that I'm with him. How many have ever been into situations in your life where you just have a hard time admitting that you are with Jesus? Where, where, where you feel that when you claim Jesus, something's going to happen to you. When, you, when Jesus said that yours is going to be persecution, because in the world today, when you claim Jesus, there is persecution. In some worlds where they actually stone you or whatever they do, they, they take you to that place, right? And this is the place where Pete was going in the place of saying, wow, I, I, I got to get out of this house. And he went to the porch, and then he denied Jesus again. And again, he denied with an oath. Now it's not just anymore denying. Denied, refused with an oath. Are you with me, guys? It's going to get more exciting in a while here. I'm just putting a foundation across here. If you choose to pull, it's going to get more exciting. Otherwise, you're just going to stay this way the whole service if you don't get excited. It's just, you've got to get excited with me. It won't happen if you're just going to sit there and fall asleep on me, which you're not, praise God. <laughs> But you've got to look in my eyes and we've got to talk together now. I mean, you're, you're too busy regretting. Stop it. Don't regret just because I said it. Don't feel sad. This is not a serious message that makes you stay in regret. It's supposed to get you out of it, okay? Don't think back, oh, no, I have regret. Praise God that you regret because you can get out of it. I'm going to show you how. So don't get so sad on me. Then he denied it with an oath. I do not know him. I don't know that man. What are you talking about? You can't hide when you know Jesus, just so you know. The scripture is pretty cool. And after a while came to him, they stood by, <laughs> stood by and, Peter, and said to Peter, Surely also you are one of them. Your speech denotes you. That word denotes gives you away, your accent, your ability. The fact is, when you're with Jesus, your talk sounds like Jesus. When you know Jesus, you act like Jesus. I can't hide that you're from Jesus. Pete was there, and he was, there's no way he could deny it. He was with Jesus for three years. You, he, he got the characteristics of him. He got his DNA all splattered all over him from Jesus. And here he goes and says, you, this is, you have that familiarity. There's no way that you cannot be from him because your speech and everything you do resembles him. And also the culture, of course, but the fact is they knew he was with Jesus because of how he'd spoken and how he said things, how he did things. And here you can't deny Jesus once you have Jesus. People are going to know it. And they're going to know that you're denying. They're going to know you're denying. Because there's going to be a wall come and say, well, I don't see that. I see Jesus. Even though they don't want to admit that you have Jesus, but they see Jesus. And so we have this regret that comes on us because knowing that we have Jesus, knowing we have these things in our life that we regret and that stop us from the flow of God. And so he says, this, your accent gives you away. Your, your, your ability, the way you speak, the way you are. Then he began to curse. There's no... Did, just as you know, every time he denied Jesus, the sin got in deeper. Just notice that. Every time he denied Jesus, the sin got deeper. Now he's cursing. Now he's not just putting an oath in there no more. Before he just denied, then he, he denied with an oath. Now he denies with a curse. He says, he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. Sometimes we think it's too late when it's not too late. But Peter here was going this place. How many times don't we come into that place of regret? That we're such a regret that we don't understand it and we are actually starting to let it grow on us. We're starting to swear on it. We're starting to live by it. We're starting to walk by it. That, that's such a big regret. I'm going to walk into a little deeper here as we go. Are you with me? Just remember this. Regret. In your life will always bring back remembrance in your life. Shred it down. Regret brings back the remembrance in your life. If you regret, you will remember the goodness. If you regret, you will remember God. 
When, you re when the regret is in your life, you'll always remember what Jesus did for you. When you regret in your life, you'll always see the promise in your life. You just got to act on the promise because when you regret, you will remember that you're doing something wrong. Because Peter did this. He says, right after verse 6 there, he says, And Peter remembered the word Jesus, of Jesus, which said to him, Before the rooster crows, you shall deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. What made him wept bitterly? Bitterly. <laughs> bitterly. What really made him cry was that he remembered. What really makes us cry is that we remember what Jesus really is to us. What really makes us grab a hold of our soul and our emotion and everything we are, that is Jesus. We remember who he is to us. And now he has lived in regret. I believe he was in regret. Like I would have been devastated and I am in devastated and I can, we can all occur and we can all see certain areas that we regret in our life, don't we? We're still working over regrets over 20 years ago sometimes. Today it's time to let go because that regret is not allowing to move forward. It's not allowing us to walk in there. We are living in regret and we have a work to do. We have so much to do in Christ Jesus. We have so much. We need to get moving here. We've got to stop letting our mistakes, our regrets, our circumstances in life stop us from moving forward. Well, he says, I did this as Jesus. I don't know how he can forgive me. Look what he did to Peter. Look what he did for Peter. Look what he did for Peter. He wept bitterly. And later on, he went and met this guy. And he, as, he appointed him to feed his sheep. After all that, <laughs> he canceled the denying. And he brought Jesus back into it. I feel that there's somebody here today, more than one person today, that if you would just let go of that one regret in your life, that one circumstance, that one grudge, that one unforgiveness in your life, it would be like a catapult forward today for you. It would be like a catapult just going forward. And I know I'm talking to somebody. Amen? Don't make this harder for me than it is. Amen? This, this is not an easy word, but the Lord said it's time to let go. And we've been having so much joyous messages and had a lot of fun with them. Maybe we'll, once the next second half might be more fun, who knows. But when it's, <laughs> the place has to be, we have to let go. If, if you really think about the story of Peter, really think about it. What if it was you? That just finished telling Jesus you would never ever deny him, no matter what happen and what happens to us when we think that things won't go wrong but then we do things wrong because of our fear of man because of the fear that is surrounded around us we carry get carried away in the very essence that we don't need to be carried away in and then we say things and do things that we regret and God is saying today that regret I died for too I died for those circumstances in your life those things cannot hold you no more today. They're not mistakes that are not fixable. They are fixable as of today. They're gone if you choose to. They'd be gone today completely. I, w I was almost ready to put this message to the side today and just cry with you. Seriously, I, I feel like crying today. Because I so long, I so long to take those steps forward today. I so long to see people's hearts totally healed. I so long to see people saved. I so long to see people discipled and trained and just get out there and do the work of God. I so long it. I so long to see us flow with no problems. I so long to see healing come instantly. I so long to see miracles happen daily. I so long it right now. I, I was sitting there in worship saying, God, I just, I feel like there's a monkey wrench in this message. I don't want it. But he says, I'm going to take the monkey wrench out. But it's going to feel like a monkey wrench, but that's why it feels like it, because you're taking it out of this church. <laughs> so let, help me take it out of there today. Let's get that monkey wrench of regret, that situation that stops us from being blessed out of everything. Amen? I so desire, when I see the people here, and when I see people every day, I so desire just to say, hearts, come rise up again. Don't live in regret no more. Regret, seriously, I know regret seriously holds you back. 
It takes you away from Jesus because regret removes you from Jesus. It did to Pete after three times until he remembered. It removed him a step further every time he said no to Jesus. Every time you say no to your healing, every time you say no to restoration in your life, you're going to take a step further away from Jesus. That's a guarantee. But every time you say yes to Jesus, you're going to take a step closer to your healing. Every time you say yes, the regret moves. And I remember on Sunday I said a statement. Time does not heal. Time alone does not heal. You have to remove that statement from your head completely. Time alone does not heal. Only time with Jesus heals. Only time in the presence heals. When you say, well, I'm just going to leave that. I'm just going to leave that regret. It's going to go away. It will not go away. Guarantee. Until you take time with Jesus to remove it. It will not go away. All your hurts and your pains and your abuse, whatever you've gone through, will not leave you by time. It will only leave you with time with Jesus. The time of healing. What is time with Jesus? Time with Jesus is the way Jesus has called you to live. Jesus has called us to be the, he's the head and we are the body. He has called us to represent each other in the healing patterns of what God has called us to do. We're representation of the very essence of his power. We are called to let it go right now. We're called not to wait for it no more. We're called to step into our healing, our moment, and let go of all regrets, all troubles, all pains, and choose to walk in the healing. And that time with Jesus will heal you completely. Amen. It will release you completely. We have to let it go. It is time today. And I can honestly say almost, I feel that every one of us can let go of something today. Would you not agree? I'm talking to myself. I want to let go and let Jesus today. I want to let go completely today. Every little detail, everything that holds me back, every little situation that holds me back, I want to let go of that. Because I know that time is up. Because I don't want to hold on to that more. Time hasn't helped me at all. But my time with Jesus in healing will help me. I want to be released. Why? So I can do what Peter did and be called to do great things. Then you look at John um, 21... <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, in John 21, um, 15 to 19, and this is after Jesus rose from the dead. This is about the third time that he showed to the disciples. And this is after the fact that he denied. And after all that, he still came back to Peter and equipped him with major stuff and he's peter is the one he told to build the church on that church the gates of hell will not prevail he called peter the wishy-washy the denier to do this he says leave that behind i'm not worried about that no more you are called in my presence i have called you to great things you, if you can let go i can do if you let go i will and today he's saying, if you let go, I will in your life. I will move you forward. I will catapult you forward if you just let go of those things that really don't mean nothing no more. But at the same time, you just have to let it go. You have to leave them behind. <coughs> Amen? And then it goes on. And John 21 is just a good chapter altogether. I, I was listening to that chapter. It's just... a phenomenal chapter of all the things that were happening there he was talking to so many different people there and he was just equipping people while he, before he right, right after his death there and he's meeting these people and just talking to him and he, in this chapter earlier on in no, maybe not this chapter but in John he's talking about how doubting Thomas had to put his fingers in, you know in there he, there's all kind of things that are just going on here everybody's just getting to know the life source when I read through John and read after he rose from the dead, everybody had to get to know Jesus again almost, it felt like. Everything, it's almost like they had to re-know him again. They, he came there in, 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 this, in this chapter, and he came there, and, and he, he, they couldn't fish. And after the fact, he rose and says, let it out on the other side. Okay. He brought some more fish and bring those fish here. Who is this guy? Even though they knew who he was, they just couldn't understand that Jesus was so different and that this was Jesus in spirit more so than in flesh. This was Jesus, the Son of God, completely. It was, it was already translated. It was transformed. It was already, the human body was, was not in that place anymore. It was Jesus, complete, in the fullness of his power, of his saving power. When he rose from the dead, where he actually had the power to change, the power that he could enter into people's hearts, the power to, he was just there. 
And there are these fish. He said, come, and let's cook some fish together. And they ate and broke bread together. You had to get to know Jesus again. It almost felt like when I was reading it, like, wow. They just, this is how we are when we have regrets and circumstances in our life. Remember when Jesus comes, we have to get to know him again. Come on. All of a sudden we say, oh yeah, Jesus is there somewhere. And we have to really look for him. And when we start communion with him again, and we start eating with him again, and we start fellowship with him again, all of a sudden we realize who he is again. Relationship. Creating that relationship that is so intimate, so great. We can let go of all that regret. Amen? And so when we walk in that place, in that fullness of it, and this is in that scripture, I'll just read it now. Verse 15 of 21, John 21. So when he had dined, Jesus said, Simon... Peter, Simon of Jonas. Why did he say Simon of Jonas? Because he was showing his legacy there. He was a, from a great prophet, from a great man of God. And so when we go into this place, he says, Simon Peter, Simon, the son of Jonas, love you me more than these? He's talking there. While he's dining there, after he's dining, are you love me more than these? He's talking to the general public there. Do you love me more than these? This word love is to, preferring to agape. He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. For he said to him, feed my lambs. So just so you know that this is going to go three times, just like he denied Jesus three times, Jesus is empowering him every time he denied him. He's empowering him every time he denied him. Why does he do that? Because he will never, ever let the devil win your life. He will make everything the devil did or that happened in your life, whatever circumstance happened in your life, he will make sure the glory of God will shine over every one of those circumstances. Every time. So he had to go three times here, but every time he, he equipped him through every place that he denied, he equipped him the power. So he goes and looks into this and he says, do you love me? This is agape love. Jesus asked him, do you love me? Do you love me the way I love you? Do you love me with a godly love? And Peter says, you know that I love you. This word love is, a, is an affection love. Of course, you, you know I have affection for you. Kind of, you, know, you, you know that. So he couldn't say that I had a godly love, I, but I have affection for you. And Jesus is not asking you to be Jesus. Just so you know in the scripture, I'll show it to you. He's asking you to be you. Peter couldn't have the godly love. He could only operate through the godly love. He could only operate through Jesus. And so he said, I have affection for you. Then he says, go feed my lamb. To Jesus, that was enough. That love there means to be approved of, to, to like, to have affection, to be friend, to welcome. I welcome you, Jesus. I welcome into you my life. I love you, and I have affection for you. I choose to have a relationship with you. That's what that love means. And then he goes and says, then feed my lambs. What does lambs mean? This is <laughs> young believers. First of all, the word feed here is to portray duty of a Christian, teach, promote the spiritual welfare up to the members of the church. That's actually what it says in Greek, the dictionary. To promote Christian growth. To promote everything that you have to lambs, to newborn believers, the new Christs, the new anointings, the new abilities in the name of Jesus. He didn't say feed my sheep in this first statement. He said, first of all, you need to start getting people excited for Christ. You need to get excited to, that they become new again in me. Because Jesus just rose from the dead, now he had to start all over again, and these people had to choose to accept Jesus in their life as the power of his Savior, the uh, power of the Spirit had to enter into their life, and now that lamb, he had to love, feed your lambs. Feed, get people excited for Jesus. Amen? I'm getting over a slight cold. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but one thing you have to know is regret removes us from his love. Regret removes us from his love. How many would you agree with that statement? How many know if you regret something, it's almost like, it's like, oh man, I can't even go to church. I can't, I can't even say hi to that person. I'm hiding under the cover. I run away from that because you have that regret, right? So that, that regret actually removes God's love from you. That's why it's so important to get rid of that today because the only way we can be successful is through God's love today. Amen? <coughs> Verse 16 says, He said to him again the second time, Simon, the son of Jonas, love you me? He said to him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said it to him. Then he said to him, 
feed my sheep. A different command. This word of love again, he's to be approved. It's to walk in the force of it. <laughs> and Jesus said to him, very, I mean, he said to him, of course I love you. Do you know that this gets intensified every time, just like denying did? Just look at it closely. Every time denying happened, it intensified every time. Every time Jesus comes in your life, it intensifies every time. It gets stronger and stronger. The statements get more passionate and more stronger and more belief comes in. Because when he, by the time he goes on the third time, first of all, he says, feed my sheep. This word feed is, is to attend my flock. Keep my sheep. Rule and govern them. Be, be a minister over it. Allow people to follow you. Be, make, take care of my sheep. Feed them. Now this is, first feed my lambs. Feed the young believers. Get them excited for Jesus. Put virtue of Jesus into them. And you need to really grab a hold of this because it's important. There's three stages here. And they go back and forth a little bit. And then the very next stage is then, now I want you to rule over my sheep. I want you to be a pastor. I want you to, to build my church now. I want you to take care of it. <coughs> I love what he says the third time. This is where I'm going to probably build on so forth more. He said to him the third time, just like you're getting tired of me saying it over and over again. Pete got tired of saying it over and over again, just so you know. I see that, Okay. You say, I know what's coming next. Yeah, yeah, come on. I, just get over it already. I know. Pete felt the same way. Pete felt the exact same way as you feel right now, if you're feeling that way. He said, oh, I don't need to hear this again. God, you just finished telling me you love me, that I love you. I just finished telling you. You know where I'm going? See, we already get conditioned to our statements. We already get conditioned to that and saying, okay, I know the scripture already. Just preach already. Maybe you're not saying that, but I'm just giving the point across. People felt the same way. He says, now the third time, Simon, of uh, son of Jarnus, love you, me. Peter was grieved now. Now it got more intensified. He was grieved. This word greed was, uh, he was sorrowful. He was, he was now made sorry. He was sorry now for what he did. He was sorry. He felt sorry now. He felt like, okay, God, I know that I denied you. I know that I rejected you. But now, Lord, I am serious now. I am choosing to walk fully with you now. I choose to have you completely. He was grieved. He was so sorry now that, it, Lord, I, I'm really serious about this. Because he said the third time, love you me. He was so grieved. And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. It increases now. His passion is rising up now. His passion rising. Lord, you know all things already. What are you bugging me for? Just like denying, it increases. Now the confession is increasing. The passion is increasing. He says, I am fighting for this, and I am not giving up on this. Lord, I love you. Amen? We need to get passionate. We need to get, grab a hold of the deep level of that. And he says, <laughs> and he said to the Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. First of all, you have to know this the third time that word love that Jesus said was not agape. Jesus said, do you have affection for me? Because he couldn't grab a hold of the fullness of the, of the agape yet. He said, do you have affection for me? If you have affection for me, if you have a relationship with me, I understand it now. Come. Jesus always understood, but now I'm giving you understanding. I just want your relationship. I want your affection towards me. I want you to be with me in every step of the way. Then he says, feed my sheep. And this word feed is preferring, um, this word sheep is preferring to a different status. The feed my sheep here is preferring to portraying just like the first time. So first he says, take over my flock, protect my flock. Now he goes back to saying, now nurture them again. So sometimes we go in the process of getting people excited. And then he says, now we've got to get these people back into new excitement again and then rise them up again. We've got to walk in the fullness of that. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel that this shutting down here shouldn't do that. I'm, what I'm trying to say is this. I really believe that if you let your regret behind... The Lord is coming to take over your life right today. And if you choose not to deny him, you should say yes to him. Three times make a perfection. Three times make a, a string that cannot be broken. And when that string cannot be broken, you can move forward today in brand new ways. And verse 18 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you, you grid yourself and walked. And I don't even know why this verse is here, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit because it's there. <laughs> 
Just if you look at it after feeding my sheep, and then he puts this verse in there. And it is because God wants to mature you quickly, and God wants to move you forward quickly, okay? That's why this verse is there. He says, truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you grid yourself, you walked where you would. But when you shall be old, that word old means when you become mature, um, you shall stretch forth your hands, and another shall grid you. You carry and carry you where you would not, where you would not. So Jesus brought back the honor back to Pete. And uh, when we walk into this place, Jesus says to him, I will equip you, and when you're matured, I'm going to give you anointing just to speak. I'm going to give you more anointing to carry out. I'm going to give you more and more anointing to just reach out. I'm going to give you more anointing, because when you are mature, the power of your authority is going to increase. It's going to increase, because you're going to, why is it going to increase? Because you're going to have followers. You're going to have people under you that's going to do the work for you. You're going to start being the visionary of what God has called you to do, and you're going to have a sphere of influence that's going to connect to it. And you're going to run more deeper with it, and deeper with it, and deeper with it. And the more mature you get, the more authority I'm going to give you, the more ability I'm going to give you, the more power there is going to be given to you today if you choose to say yes today and let go of all those things of your past. Verse 19 says, This spoke he signifying by what death we should glorify God and that he had spoken this, he said, follow me. I believe this is a place where I'm going to probably be done early today so you guys are going to be happy. Oh, I really feel this is a place where he says, come and follow me today. I really feel that if Pete denied um, Jesus three times or look, Judas betrayed Jesus, what, what kind of decisions did they make there? They made different decisions, didn't they? One decision made, say, I'm giving up completely. I, what I did was unforgivable. Right? What are you choosing today? Are you choosing to say that I am unforgivable? I choose not to take a step into this no more? Or are you choosing to say that I am going to walk in this and I'm going to leave my regret behind, regret behind, I'm going to leave my circumstances behind, and I'm going to choose to walk in, with Jesus completely and I'm going to see the healing in my, in my body and whatever I need today. Amen? Hmm. Pastor Dan, I just feel I need some guitar there to help me out a little bit. Can you just play a little bit? I'm not giving up to breaking through because I came here for a reason. Amen? And I'm, I know you're receiving. That's not the point. I feel in my heart what I need to do and I want to break through. It's nothing to do with anybody. I, I realize that. I feel that God really wants to release. Really wants to release. Really wants to release. He wants to release every circumstance in your life today. He wants to release every problem in your life today. He wants you to stop letting that stop you from loving Him the way you want to love Him from moving forward like you need to move forward today. He just simply wants you to move forward today. He wants you to let it go. And just like Peter wept bitterly, he didn't just weep a little bit, but he recognized that he's done wrong. And today, if we recognize that that was a regret, we recognize that was something that we have to let go. And he's going to come to say, and are you ready to let Jesus, what are you going to say when Jesus says, feed my lambs? What are you going to say today? What are you going to say when he says, get those new believers excited for Jesus? What are you going to say today when he says, stop hiding yourself? What are you going to say today? Stop being by yourself. Stop doing things by yourself. What are you going to say today when he says, just get involved. Get and feed my sheep. Get, them, get hungry. Get in the presence of God today. What, what are we going to say today? Are we going to say, yes, Lord? Yes, Lord, I love you. Of course I'm going to do it. You know, the, the coolest thing is that he didn't even ask, and I, I, he didn't even ask him to feed my sheep. He told them to. He asked, do you love me? It's your love that's going to break through to your call. It's the love of Jesus that's going to break through today the regrets and remove that. He didn't even ask him if you're going to feed my sheep. He says, go feed my lambs and go feed my sheep. Why did he say that? He only said it because he says, yes, I do love you, Jesus, and you know it. I, I have affection for you. I have a relationship with you. I choose to follow you. I choose to do it with you. I choose to be with you every step of my way. Then he releases you every time you say yes to Jesus. He releases to you into your call. He releases you into what you're called to do. Every time you say yes, just simply say, I love you. Don't worry about every little detail. How many of you willing to just say, yes, Jesus, I love you today? How many of you say, I'm letting go of my regret because I just love you, Jesus? I choose to say, I love you. I believe today Jesus is asking, do you love me today? Do you really love me today? 
And if you say yes, be careful because he's going to tell you to do something. Are you willing to say yes and allow him to ask you to do something? Everybody just say, yes, we love you, Jesus. And now when you say, yes, you love you, Jesus, guess what's going to happen? He's going to say, go feed something. Go feed the friends you have around you. Go feed the sphere of influence that you have around you. Go take care of those people. Shine Jesus to them. Do something now because you love me. If you truly love me, then he says, well, I'm going to ask you again because I didn't, I didn't hear you good enough the first time maybe. I'm going to cancel out every lie of the enemy and I'm going to make sure that the love shines through you like never before. You know what removes the regret? It's simply the love of Jesus. It's simply saying yes to Jesus. Saying, yes, Jesus, I realize I've done wrong. I repent of it. I remove myself from it. And I choose to walk forward. I choose to say, I love you. And I choose to go forward. Amen? That's truly what we just need to do today. I want the power of God to release like never before. But I don't feel that we're ready, even as a Christian community or anything that's going on right now, that's going on out there right now, the world today. Without the love of Jesus, we can't move forward.